uh, considerable. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mm. I call Maureen Pugh. Um, thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. Um, as I start my um, call on part one of the um, Crown Minerals Amendment Bill, I'd just like to make note of the process that has been followed by the Select Committee and also, um, in particular, the work done by MB prior to the preparation of this bill. Um, quite often, um, we see, uh, as the Select Committee process uh, progresses, that there are issues raised that um, um, quite often set back the process and require further information. So I congratulate MB on the thorough work that was done in preparation of this bill, and in particular, um, the, the work that they did in um, consulting with the various sectors that are uh, responsible um, for Crown Minerals. And, you know, even um, uh, the uh, Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet, but also went on to um, consult with PEPENS and uh, Greymouth Petroleum, Stratera, um, regarding certain clauses in the bill. So um, just wanted to acknowledge that before I started. Um, Mr Chair, um, thank you um, for um, the opportunity. Um, I wanted to also bring up this, the um, point raised by my colleague around section 54A in the bill. So 54A um, talks about uh, section, um, excuse me, talks about um, schedule four land. Um, and part of the, um, the consultation that was done, not sure covered off the implications of uh, the section four land. And in particular, I want to point out the parts that refer to um, um, accessing coastal areas. So um, as a big part of the gold mining industry on the west coast, um, black sand mining is quite a lucrative but also a fickle arrangement, um, given that you are always battling with the tides. Um, so, uh, Mr Chair, I just wanted to make sure from the Minister and the Chair whether the implications of dealing with machinery and um, any of the perhaps biosecurity issues that may be um, as a consequence of having these machinery, this, this heavy machinery on beaches in the coastal areas uh, was a concern that was raised. Uh, because I did note also in, um, in the report from the Select Committee that the issue was also raised about biosecurity. And, and I note from the report um, that the transport of machinery around various mine sites was seen by some submitters to be of concern, uh, yet the Crown Minerals Amendment Bill did not address any of those biosecurity issues. And I just take the point that, you know, when you're moving from perhaps one beach site or one bush site and you're taking heavy machinery to another um, site, uh, one of the points raised was around carry dieback and transmitting those, um, those biosecurity risks around the country. So the bill did not address that, and I just wonder if the um, minister could perhaps um, shed some light on perhaps around the rationale for uh, that not being part of the discussion at the time, and whether he does in fact um, think that there should be some attention paid to that as part of this bill. Um, Mr Chair, um, the bill um, makes very small uh, adjustments uh, to the existing uh, bill, um, to the Act, the Crown Minerals Act of 1991. And one of the major um, considerations and changes that has been made is to the, um, the cost of uh, the penalties now going up to $800,000. And I just wonder um, whether the Minister could enlighten us about some of the considerations or perhaps provide an example of what might attract the maximum penalty, because I do note that it is up to $800,000. Uh, but um, it does seem a high price to pay for um, perhaps an administrative error or um, uh, you know, non-compliance in terms of notification to the ministry. 
and I just wonder if we could get some clarification around the, the types of um, misdemeanours that might attract that high $800,000 fine. Uh, thank you. Um, I call Lawrence Hill. Uh, Mr Chair, thank you for the opportunity to speak at the committee.